Hi, welcome to Let's Do Books. I'm Tara, and you can email me at tara at thelesbianreview.com with any questions or comments, or come join our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club. Our October book club book will be And Playing the Role of Herself by K.E. Lane, but we're here to talk about this month's book club book, Poppy Jenkins by Claire Ashton. I'm joined today by Sheena, the queen of all things lesbian and founder of the lesbian review and the lesbian talk show this episode will have spoilers i know we've been told sometimes we don't but for sure we're going to spoil this one so if you haven't read it yet go read the book and come back or listen ahead at your peril sheena are you excited to talk about poppy hey tara i'm very excited to talk about poppy but you didn't sound particularly excited I am. I am excited. I just finished it last night uh, for my reread, and it's still so good. I think I liked it even better than the first time. And I have to say, I had much better dreams than I did after watching the season finale of Twin Peaks. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Poppy Jenkins was a book that came out last year, and I was just entirely enamored with it and made you read it. Mm-hmm. I think it was one of the few books that made both of our top 10 lists. Yes, like, you're right. It snuck on to mine at the very last minute, too. Like, I had already submitted my list, and I was like, whoa, hang on, we need to put this book on there. Absolutely, because it was just so excellent. I, I can honestly say it. It's, it's still one of the best books that I've just read ever, okay? Because it's just, it's, it's got so many facets to it. It's not just a simple romance, which is what it looks like on the when you first examine it, right? So when you read the blurb and you look at the cover and you think, oh, this is a sweet little romance. Well, it is, but it's so layered. And so we're going to talk about some of those layers today. But first, I think you should tell people what the book's about. I'm going to do that. So (laughs) I was trying to decide if I should read your blurb. And then I remembered, I actually finished reading this book yesterday. I can... I can competently actually say what it's about. You go with your bad self. Uh, All right. So, so Poppy Jenkins is in her early 30s. She lives in a tiny town in mid Wales. She left for university, but came back. She's helping her parents um, raise her little sister, who just given the age difference is actually a lot like a daughter to her. Everybody loves Poppy. She has a kind word and a smile for everyone. She always looks for the best in people. And it's one day when she's walking her little sister Pip to school when she sees this real attractive curvy woman hanging out of the side of a car and then realizes that it's actually her best friend from high school, Rosalind, who just broke her heart. When they were 16, Rosalind cut her out of her life without any kind of an explanation or anything like that. She hasn't seen her since the end of high school and Rosalind is back and she's in town and it's the start of everything being different for both of them is how I would describe it because it's Poppy's book so I mean obviously there are things that happen to Rosalind and there but if we're talking about what the book's about it's Poppy's book it's all from her perspective and it's how how do things change with Rosalind coming back and how do both of them change so that they can get their happily ever after because like we said it's a romance of course there's a happily ever after and what a good one it is right but to complicate matters when Rosalind first sees Poppy again after so long die Poppy's guy friend is there and they look all warm and cozy because he's got his, like, he's holding Poppy because, frankly, Poppy's very taken aback by this whole thing and doesn't actually quite know how to explain that Pip is actually her sister and not her daughter, and Di is her friend and not her husband, which is what Rosalind thinks initially. They Yeah, they do look this, like the perfect little family. They do. And this sets the, the perfect tone for the rest of the book, which is this giant kind of misunderstanding of what's going on. Yeah. What's funny is that usually I hate books where a conversation can clear up the conflict. In their case, though, I think it works because it's not just one conversation. It's like a series of missed conversations all the way from childhood. So one conversation wouldn't have been enough to clear it up. You know, I understand the whole thing of a conversation can clear up a a misunderstanding and, and a lot of romances would work Better if those characters just had the conversation. I mean, I think 
Amy on the group yesterday said about some book that, or said just generally that we're not in high school anymore. Why are we not communicating better? Well, especially when it's something like, I saw you out for lunch with someone else, so therefore you're definitely cheating on me and therefore we're over. Where a conversation would have been, oh yeah, no, actually that was my coworker or that was my longtime friend who's in town. And like those kinds of ones just drive me up the wall because it feels like lazy writing. In this case though, it really is that like, Rosalind didn't tell Poppy when they had that first kiss when they were 12 and she figured out that she was gay, she didn't tell her that because she was afraid of what would happen. And when her attraction grew all through the years, again, didn't talk to her about it. And Poppy didn't clear it up first thing when she came, when Rosalind came into town. Hey, by the way, guess what? I'm gay now. And then when she tried to have the conversation, it was interrupted. And when Rosalind tried to tell her that she was gay, it was inter um, Poppy said, don't tell me why you cut me out of your life if it's not going to change anything so it was like this layered series of communication issues that actually worked really well and made sense given who they are who they were growing up and who they are now yes i also think it's a lot to do with the skill of the writer because as humans we are not open with each other we are not communicating effectively with each other because frankly life would be a very different scenario if we actually did that and so as a writer, if you can understand the, the motivations for not saying something and why that fear is stronger than the motivation to say something and possibly change something. So I think what Ashton did was understand those motivations and make it so very clear. I think this also gets into um, who they are as people. So we may as well talk about them as characters. Because everybody does love Poppy and nobody loves Rosalind at first. She's always seen as that stuck up little English girl who never fit in and who always just wants to cause trouble. Um, and so when they finally have that conversation and Poppy said, why didn't you just say something? What, it would have changed everything. We could have been happy. It would have changed our lives. And Rosalind said like, yeah, it's great. Maybe you got to come out and everybody loved you, but the same thing wouldn't have happened to me. And there's this line that she says, and I can't remember if it's in that conversation. No, yeah, it is in that conversation. She says, I've never had a problem with anyone. Maybe you haven't, Rosalind looked desperate, but Poppy, you are so well loved. You could commit a murder and people would say, I'm sure she had her reasons like and it's true like poppy had a very different coming out experience and like poppy's mom said she was able to do it after was it after civil unions were a thing or something like that yeah. like it's not full marriage equality but basically like after the country said yeah okay you can it's all right to be gay and rosalind didn't have that because she figured it out well before her I think though, even if Rosalind had figured it out later, she still wouldn't have had the same response. No. No. The, the way the town feels about her is so jaded that even when she's trying to help them, it's like, like she's trying to be evil. It's true. And you see that in um, that scene in the pub during Di's stag night when those people i can't swear <laughs> those people um from town uh particularly like alan watkins uh, goons are are talking about her and how much they hate her and they and they just keep calling her a lezer like they're they're very much making it a slur so that it's part of it's not just that they don't like her and what she says and what she does but that her sexuality is a part of it that they have to like throw down these slurs and I tries to say to Poppy like well you, you can't take it seriously they never say that about you well that doesn't make it that doesn't make it okay that doesn't mean that the town is accepting it just means that the town is accepting of Poppy and they're not of Rosalind like that doesn't mean that they're accepting of sexuality in general necessarily but that's exactly Rosalind's whole childhood experience was she was the outsider and no matter what she did, she couldn't break in. And the only reason she was even vaguely accepted was because Poppy was her friend. Mm-hmm. Did you, do you have a favorite character between the two of them? Tomorrow's got a favorite character. Tomorrow loves Rosalind and finds Poppy annoying. <laughs> you know what's funny? I didn't understand that the first time I read it. Um, the second time I read it, 
I still love Poppy. I don't actually think Poppy is annoying. I think Poppy is slightly oblivious because reading through it the second time, I was able to see just how she missed all the cues with Rosalind being attracted to her and all of those feelings bubbling up again. Um, and if you're only reading it the first time and you're reading it just from Poppy's perspective, it is kind of easy to miss that um, because Poppy is, she's kind of naive. She's very naive. She, I mean, imagine growing up in a bubble where you are the quintessential girl next door and everybody loves you and there's no conflict around you. I mean, of course you're not going to be savvy to what's actually going on, you know? Um, I thought there was also a lot of really good um, side characters mm. Mm. in this book. I quite liked Poppy's mother, uh, Emma. Yes. Emma? Is that her name? Yeah. Um, who apparently did way too much weed <laughs> in a previous decade. And is kind of, so she seems quite oblivious at times, but she's also incredibly insightful at other times. Yes. Um, and the, the, the chicken brace, the incident comes to mind. Yes. So good. Um, I also liked that she's hiding from all of them that she understands Welsh. <laughs> Absolutely. So that the father and grandmother can still talk and talk about her. The way she put it was basically that, like, if they said something I didn't like, I would say something, but they haven't. And you can tell in their conversation that she knows he has her back. Like, it was just really, really sweet. And I think she's actually the one who puts it best about Rosalind and Poppy's relationship. She's always seen from the beginning how well they complement each other. So there was another passage that I was going to read, which is from... Emma and it's Emma sat back and folded away her book I suppose you were opposites in many ways that was a source of friction and heartache but I think also your greatest strength Rosalind brought out a bit of steel in you when left to your own devices your kindness can be taken for granted by some she reached out and squeezed Poppy's hand but your kindness mellowed Rosalind and kept her focused on what was important you gave her humanity I think you balanced one another and made each a better person because of it and what people you are and that's like sure Emma might be the person who has her head in the clouds and is always thinking uh, about other things, and but she also is able to see right at the heart of who they are and who they've always been in a way that's just beautiful. Absolutely. But that also so perfectly illustrates one of the main themes in this book, which is the duality of people. Yes. Because nothing is as simple as it seems. Because while Poppy, yes, on the surface, seems to be this perfect girl next door, can't do anything wrong, sweet as honey pie, made from butterflies and flowers, we actually discover that she's holding this, the secret inside that Rosalind really hurt her, and she's been in pain since then. Yeah. yeah. And also, we discover, and, and Poppy's mother actually mentions it, that she knew that Poppy was the one, the little arsonist when they were kids. Like, yes. she was the one burnt down the the brownie hall or whatever it was the boy scouts she she burnt down the boy scouts hall which was much nicer than the girl scouts no 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 she burned down the girl scouts hall because it wasn't as nice Uh, they basically had no choice but to rebuild it right right anyway which was quite clever right but so so there's this duality in people which is done so beautifully in this book Oh, like David Thorne, Rosalind's father. Yes. I love As well, like we see him at the beginning shortly after he's had a stroke. Um, and, and we see that like Poppy on the sly helps a little bit with his rehabilitation by taking him for these walks while Rosalind and her mother are out. It lets him at least emotionally have some space and some dignity. And they... Although they'd been fond of each other before, they really build this lovely relationship. And it's that relationship and a conversation that they have that gives him what he needs so that he and Rosalind can work on their relationship again. And it's just, I love him. He's lovely. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Everybody's lovely. Except Alan Watkins, who can die in a fire, quite <laughs> frankly. Like... I actually, in rereading it, I had to skim over the Alan Watkins parts because they made me so angry. But that's brilliant. That's exactly... But he also gets his just desserts. Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. I want him 
to suffer. <laughs> um, and I hope he suffers. <laughs> Speaking of side characters who we don't see a lot of, do you think Sam will ever get a book of her own? So Sam is Rosalind's boss, who is also her ex-girlfriend and who isn't quite over Poppy yet. Because I was reading and I was like, hmm. Oh, sorry, yeah, Ros- Rosalind's boss, not Poppy's boss. Yes, and she's she's also Rosalind's ex, and they, yeah, we see her for like three seconds. Yeah, she's in a few scenes. I don't know. I think I just want to see Poppy and Rosalind show up again at some point in another book. I don't think Ashton's gonna write a follow up because it's just not in her style, hey? No, that's true. Every book, every book. Maybe that's worth we can talk about what her writing style is like. Every book is different. I think Pendence is the only one I haven't read, but my understanding is that that is also wildly different from the others. It because, like, really is. Poppy is this beautiful, layered, seems very light romance, but is also actually quite angsty. And then That Certain Something was a great rom-com, although also had a certain amount of angst due to the nature of what it was about. And then... How do you even get a, a one-line description of after Mrs. Hamilton? I can't do it without swears. Your brain wants to explode yeah, when you read you that book. Okay, so in terms of writing style for this one, so I actually went back to my review for this. I wrote this in my review, and I think this is quite apt, even if I say it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up any of Claire Ashton's novels, and you will be reading a novel that defines the reason that literature is considered art. That's it. She writes pretty words. She does. Yeah, she strings them together in a a nice way. There were things that happened in this book that I haven't really seen in other places. Like I said, it has that deceptive... The whole time I read it, I have that kind of warm feeling of summer. Everything feels kind of warm and lovely. And yet there is that like deep pain and angst that's a thread through all of it and works really well. But there's also another thread that runs through and like she writes desire really well. Like really, really well. And I would say none of the sex scenes are, first of all, there aren't many and they're not particularly explicit, but they're still really hot. And I think it's because there is that build up all along in revisiting feelings and examining them so that it becomes the culmination of something quite meaningful and also the like I've never quite seen there is a lot of talk of breasts in this book (laughs) breasts and bums but especially breasts not always in the context of desire of course because we also in getting the description of Poppy's nan uh find out how large her breasts are it's like poppy just noticed breasts a lot a lot but i think the thing that i liked was that that was part of the whole writing desire that it was like it feels almost like a celebration of one woman's desire for another woman's that it's just a part of it's a part of the wonderful side of poppy and it's fun and it's occasionally funny and it's very, very obvious. <laughs> like, she's not subtle about it at all. Yeah. I came to a conclusion with this book that Claire Ashton understands breasts. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's, I, I don't think I have anything to add to that. So you've pretty much hit on my next point, which was she writes attraction between two women like a master. So I've got an... Uh, A little piece here which illustrates it nicely. It was beguiling looking at someone so familiar made exotic by the passage of time. Which in itself just is a beautiful line, just by the way. There were tiny creases around her eyes that made her smile more intriguing. Every expression had more emphasis and character. The raise of an eyebrow, a flicker of pleasure around her mouth. It was captivating. Poppy's cheeks flashed and her breath quickened. Those icy blue eyes seemed to thaw into deep sapphire, hypnotizing, enticing drawing her in. Almost close enough to touch. Close enough to feel the warmth of Rosalind's cheeks. Poppy licked her lips. Her head spun light as she closed her eyes. Mm Mm-hmm. So good. It's so good. I had a 
like just a it's just one line that I pulled that was kind of similar but it was just a delicious thrill sparked through Poppy's body radiating from where Rosalind's lips stroked the kind of touch that makes the body light and simple existence sublime come on how right. how come on she's so good <laughs> You would think that authors would sit for hours and hours trying to figure out how to write something. The, the two paragraphs that are this beautiful, right? That's what I would think. And then you go follow Ashton on Facebook. And just like she comments on something and it's like, man, this is just beautiful. Just write stuff for me all day. I know. It's actually, she um, often comments on photos of my kids and I'm delighted every time because that's ex exactly that. Like she, I feel like we could sit down over a cup and just have a really good chat about like the realities of parenting and I would walk away delighted. Delighted. That's just... Mm. I think she notices things in life and, and situations and people and has a, a way of putting them into words that just so perfectly mimic the feeling that you get from them. Yes. Well, that's why I was saying, like, reading that book, it was almost like being bathed in warm light, despite there being some incredibly angsty parts. Like, I was reading last night and I got to the part where Poppy says, I can't be with you. You left a crack in me or like you basically like you broke me when you cut me out of your life. And I had to learn how to live with that. And if you left me again, I wouldn't actually be able to go on. And I've read this book before, right? Like I know this is coming. I should be fine. And I was not fine when I was reading that, but it still felt like I was being bathed in warm light. Like, how does that happen? It doesn't make sense. Every book feels like a gift. It's and it's also like, as much as I say it's angsty, it is also quite funny in parts. Mm. To, to go back to what I was saying about Poppy and her obvious desire for Rosalind and her appreciation of her body. <laughs> there's a scene that's quite great so wells is this like very sleepy town and it used to get a lot of tourist traffic and even now the tourist traffic has been dying down but they somehow somehow what could it possibly be <laughs> rosalind uh they ended up in the guardian's food guide and i did say we were gonna have spoilers <laughs> and so she comes to work one day at the cafe and it's like Full. They've sold out, like they're booked for the whole day. They're down a waitress. Poppy's panicking. And Rosalind says that she can do it. Like she can help her out. She waitress through college. This is not a big deal. So this passage is from that scene where Poppy is giving her the information she needs to know before they can just get on and hustle for the day. This is today's lunch menu, Poppy said again. Although until midday, we serve cakes, drinks, and breakfast sandwiches. So lots of baps, buns, and muffins, Rosalind suggested. For a moment, Poppy's brain stalled on Rosalind's muffin and baps, then tripped over her buns. A tumbleweed blew through her mind, and some time later, the noise of the cafe intruded. That's right, yes, she said. <laughs> Which just, like... <sighs> so good. So funny. But Ashton has a wicked sense of humor, and I just love it. Like, every single one of her books has got some kind of, like, except maybe Penance, you know, some funny moments. Penance, I don't think, has any funny moments. Let's talk prose, because we're running out of time here, Tara. I know, I know. Well, I mean, the problem is that we could talk for probably forever about this book. But prose, prose, tell me what your big prose are. Everything, like literally everything about this book, the way it's written and these characters that I love. And it makes me want to book a plane ticket to Wales and just like go wander around the countryside. I love that actually the area is like its own character in the book, which we haven't talked about earlier, but like Wells is a character. Yeah, I loved everything. Everything, that ending. Oh my God, that ending. Yeah, that's all I got. What about you? Okay, my pros are... Perhaps once in a lifetime will you get to read a book that makes you feel all the things that this book does and all wrapped up in such a perfect package. That's my prose. Fine, if you actually want to be articulate and not just stumble around and make an ass of yourself about how much you love the book, whatever, that's fine. <laughs> okay, what are your cons? 
<laughs> Alan Watkins, may he rot in hell. <laughs> No, we, we needed we, we needed Alan Watkins. Watkins because if we didn't have Alan Watkins, the two of them wouldn't have gotten together. I mean, fine. And also the fact that I hate him that much is actually a sign of how well she wrote him. I don't cons. Um, I'm never going to see these characters again. Mm. It's not out in audiobook yet. I have a solution to that. What's that? Well, the first time I read it, yeah, Tamara actually read it to me, so it was kind of like an audiobook, and that was awesome because that also came with. Commentary. Is she going to call me and read it to me? (laughs) I'll I'll tell her (laughs) to. Yeah, I'm sure she's going to love that. She's got nothing else to do. I want it in audio and I want it to be narrated by a Welsh person. Like, I actually, that's what I, and specifically, I want it to be narrated by Joanna Page, who played Stacy and Gavin and Stacy, because I love her. She is adorable and would have the perfect voice for Poppy. I'm just putting that in the universe. Maybe the universe will bring it back to me. I don't know. We'll never know if we don't try. You have put it out there, not Tara. So right? You know. Right? That's the secret, isn't okay. it? So my cons, Ashton has not written another book since then, or she has written it, she hasn't published it. So I have not seen another book since this book, which is my big con. Accurate. Yep, that's a good one. My last con is the Welsh names were rather tongue twisty. So while I enjoyed them from creating the character and whatever it is, dude, some of those names was like, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like. I was okay with that. I would have been interested in like a pronunciation guide at the end or something like that or a glossary as a glossary and a pronunciation guide actually would have been pretty great because I understood what they were sort of from context much like if I was reading a book with a big word and I was too lazy to look up what the big word meant. Right but with Welsh words you can't like like you know the Kindle's got the function where you can look up the words. Okay, it doesn't have a pronunciation function, though. Well, did it? Were you actually able to use it to find out what the words meant? No, but this is what I mean. So, so not for Welsh. Like, so, this was an issue I had with the book. I agree with you. Like, don't take them out, but give us a pronunciation guide. That'd be great. Yeah. Themes. There were there were a couple of other themes in the in the book, which I felt apart from the duality, which was. There was a very strong theme with coming to terms with who you are. Yep. For both Poppy and Roslyn. Because while Roslyn spent her sort of youth coming to terms with who she was, you kind of saw that in her explanations to Poppy as to what happened. So that was a, a really nice and relevant theme because I think a lot of us struggle at some point in our lives with who we are. Especially if you're any kind of other. So if you're a queer person... You're immediately an other. You're not represented in mainstream. You're different to 99% of the people you know. So I love that that was a a theme because it really spoke to me, you know, on a deep personal level. Another theme was discovering that love is not entirely lost no matter what. So there's this theme of hope and this theme of you can get it back even if it really looks like you can't. Not just Poppy and, and Rosalind reuniting, but Dai's wedding. Because Dai's Di, Di's wedding goes to hell at one point and he doesn't have a venue anymore. And he doesn't have money, his budget's blown, and the poor boy is like now stuck without anything. Yeah, they think but, they're not even going to they think they're gonna have to put off their wedding for a few years. When actually uh, Rosalind again steps in and saves the day, as she does for everybody in town. And they actually end up with a wedding that's much more beautiful than what they had planned in the first place. Like it actually sounds kind of magical what they end up with. Absolutely. And also if you think about the town, it's not love so much, but the town is failing quite miserably when we first meet the town. And through the events in the book, the town actually recovers a little bit and and through some some interventions the town actually sort of starts to blossom again you know it's it's not all lost no matter how bleak it seems well and even in its own little like what could have been poppy and Rosalyn is mrs morgan morgan and sarah who had been in a relationship when they were quite young and i think they're in their 70s now like they're they're elderly anyway i can't remember 
if it was Saris that broke up with Mrs. Morgan Morgan or Mrs. Morgan Morgan that <laughs> broke up with Saris. But anyway, the result is that obviously the Mrs. went off and married Mr. Morgan. And after he dies, though, we see we find out that, you know, they were there together in the front row at Poppy and Rosalind's wedding. And it was just such a lovely like it was just a line at the end talking about where they ended up. And we have like just a little bit, just a couple of scenes related to them earlier, but it was a really nice reinforcement of that theme that even when you think it's over, even if there's been decades, it's not actually necessarily always over. Which I think is why you bathed in this happy light because it's, there's hope. This book has got so much hope. Yeah, it does. It's so good. And the last theme I want to talk about is community. There's a strong theme of community in this book. Yeah. Part of Rosalind's big change is going from someone who always saw herself as an outsider and, and almost like perpetuated that because she didn't even seem to really try to be part of the community yeah. to her realizing that if she didn't actively become part of the community, she could never be with Poppy. Yes. And, and I loved that... She took that time, like when Poppy said, I can't, I can't be with you if you're not in this for forever. And we don't get to see Rosalind's perspective, and I would love to have seen some of her headspace. But still, we know that she went away and she made some decisions and she started shifting things around in her life so that she could make that happen. And really did actually actively become, because she was kind of helping out a little bit here and there with things in Wells, but she actually becomes much more active in helping out and starts to think of like, what will her place be if she moves there? How will she be able to build a full life there that will be good for her and Poppy? Like she starts thinking of them as a unit, not just as two people that are living separately. And she's like a little bird. She goes and makes a nest for them. Oh, oh she does. It's so lovely. And when she reveals it to Poppy and Poppy's just like, this is the space where we did this and this when we were children, you know, and uh, it's just so beautiful. Well, and I love that when Poppy gets the two notes and comes to see Rosalind there at the house and poor Rosalind, you can tell, just has her stomach in her throat because she's like sitting there with her face in her hands waiting for Poppy to show up with her answer. And that what's been done to the house since then is she started painting the walls white, which was the one thing Poppy said needed, to, where she said, like, no, all you need to do to this house is just slap some white paint on the walls. So already even, since she showed this nest that she's been building for her, she's making those adjustments to make it Poppy's home. And that's another thing about Ashton's writing, is you didn't see what was on the notes until right at the end. Yeah, well, you saw the one note. Yes. But you didn't see the proposal. But, but the not proposal. but not the other. Oh, I know. It's so... And it was so beautifully revealed because you had an inkling that that's what it was. Yeah, but you actually had it revealed at the exact perfect moment. And she made you wait for it. And that was just beautiful. Yeah, and, and even after the, like, how Rosalind had the porthole window put in their bedroom for her. It was so lovely. This book is so lovely. I want this book to be made into a movie and I want them to not mess it up. Like they can't, they have, like if they, okay, so I want it to be a movie or a mini series, but if it got messed up, it would break my heart. So I only want it if it's going to be a really good one or not at all. Let's start with an audio book. <laughs> <laughs> I worry too much about lesbian film. Oh, that's true. Yeah, there's... Yeah, okay. That's a whole other episode. <laughs> I actually just don't... I don't watch it anymore. I just don't. Like, if you tell me which ones I will watch and they will make me happy in my heart, I will watch it. But I'm not watching, like, dead and destroyed lesbians anymore. Not even dead and destroyed lesbians. It's just boring and crap lesbians. Well, I don't want that either. I don't want or that either. Cheating, you know, some woman cheating on her husband or her boyfriend with because she's actually a lesbian. I actually can't deal with that anymore. Please stop with those guys. Or like the kids are all right, where they're a happy couple, but the one goes off and sleeps with a dude for a while. Like, no, I don't want that either. Like, what is that? 
Like, I don't even know why we have to tell these stories. I don't know. I think I think it's Oscar bait. I think in that because it was actually like there were some great performances, but I think it was just Oscar bait. Anyway, but this podcast is about Poppy Jenkins, not us, <laughs> not us <laughs> venting our spleens about <laughs> lesbian film. All right, any, anything else in conclusion? That is that's a wrap from me. But I maintain. Ashton is one of the greats in the genre of lesbian fiction. And I wish, I wish people were paid proportionally to their brilliance because then she'd be very, very rich. Yeah, absolutely true. If I were doing my own top 10, like all time top 10 lesbian books, this would be in it and it would be very, very near the top. If anybody made it this far to the end of this episode without reading the book yet, well, first of all, you've been spoiled a lot. <laughs> um, but second of all, you have to read it. You have to read this book. It's just gorgeous. I think, though, even with the spoilers in this podcast, if you go pick it up now, you'll still enjoy it. Thoroughly. Really, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This episode just may not have made a whole lot of sense. <laughs> Probably not. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... Again, just a reminder, the next book club book will be And Playing the Role of Herself by K.E. Lane. I'm pretty excited about that one because as previous listeners probably know, that is actually the first lesbian book that I've ever read. That was the book that got me into the genre, the beginning of it all. I wouldn't be here without that book. So I'm pretty excited to talk about that with one of my fellow reviewers. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much, Sheena, for joining me. Thanks for having me, Tara. <laughs> I'm Tara. You've been listening to Les Do Books. Remember to email me at Tara at thelesbianreview.com with your questions or comments. Don't forget to join us at our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club, so you can talk to us about Poppy Jenkins and anything else you're reading and loving. You can also find me and all the other podcasters on the Lesbian Talk Show channel at our Facebook group, The Lesbian Talk Show Chat Group. If you've enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to rate this show and subscribe. To find this and many other great shows, all you need to do is search for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. And do Uh, email Tara, because she likes it, and she gets very miserable when you don't email her. Well, nobody actually ever does email me, but that's okay. I mean, whatever, maybe you're all shy. You can be shy. You should still email her. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Uh, well, that was a good podcast. Uh, a good 43 minute podcast. We are not good at short podcasts together. Tara, are we ever good at short anything together? We can't even manage the top 10 list of 10 books on it together. Why would you only put 10 books on <laughs> top 10? But you know, you're rubbing off. Like, I have podcasters come on with their like six books when I'm like, say some five, it's a top 10 list. Okay, but don't I get a bonus? You know? <laughs> like, oh, no, only Tara does. <laughs> Shame. Tell that to Lee Winter. Oh, I don't know that I. That, by the way, I meant to tell you, was a great episode. It was a really the good villains. episode. Yeah. I 100% agree with her about Dolores Umbridge. Speaking of people, I want to shoot into space. <laughs> That's the one. Fantastic.